based on gas development in the UK. For our nave, we have this chap here, Linton Crosby. He's the founder of Crosby Textile, which is part of CIT Group. I'm not sure what all these initials mean. But they are lobbyists for the oil and gas industry, amongst others. Now, he's a special advisor to the Prime Minister, and apparently one of the strongest influences on our government. And down at the bottom here, we have the Joker in the pack. Baron Howard Guildford, he of the desolate northeast fame. A renowned advocate of shale gas, he was Transport and Energy Minister in Margaret Thatcher's government, and until recently, a personal advisor to the Foreign Secretary, William Hague, on energy security. He's also George Osborne's father-in-law. <laughs> but those three are just the tip of the iceberg. According to reports, there are over 100 people at the heart of our government who have either personal or family links to the energy industry. Now, the idea of bringing people from outside the political spectrum in to advise government departments uh, is nothing new, it's been going on for a long time. But I don't think there's ever been a government in the UK in modern times that has been so deeply infiltrated by one particular section of the business world. So it's easy to see how our government might assume that the national interest is, at least in part, synonymous with the interests of the oil and gas industry. And I suspect that Mr. Clough might be talking the same language. But enough of politics for a moment. Let's get back to our lovely estuary and to the local community. Because if something's in the national interest, it must surely also be in the interest of us. Even if it's safe, as you've just been told, you, the people of Barry Port and the surrounding area, are still going to have to put up with the disruption and the dirt and the noise and heavy vehicles driving up and down your roads and air pollution from burning off the gas, waste gases and all the other inconveniences that go with heavy industry. So what are you going to get in return? Not a lot. Will it help to bring down gas prices, as Chancellor George Osborne constantly claims shale gas will do? Even the aforementioned Lord Brown, which is your chairman of Kudrilla, has confirmed that, un confirmed that unconventional gas development in the UK will not lower energy prices. There's been much talk of the shale revolution bringing down prices in the USA, but the USA has an internal market. So they control their own energy prices. Whereas here in the UK, energy is bought and sold on the international market and the pricing is way out of our control. There will be no savings to energy users. And it seems that the Labour Party agrees. This is the opening paragraph of the Labour Party position paper which was produced uh, recently. Uh, and you'll see it says there, shale gas is unlikely to be a game changer for consumer bills or energy security. Remember the previous speaker spoke about energy security? Now I know there are a number of, uh, if I can just step aside for a second, I know there are a number of Labour Party members here, um, and I'd suggest that you get hold of a copy of that document and, and give it a read if you haven't already, um, and then ask yourself, does it go far enough? Back to community benefits. Will UCG provide the local community with lots of jobs? Well, Clough has circulated this nice, nicely produced leaflet with some nice pictures on there talking about the um, local economy and jobs, and there's three big power stations there, three big, big installations there. But didn't the last speaker just say that the bottom one? was far bigger than anything you've seen in this area. And in fact, he talked about 
a demonstrator to prove the technology works. So we're talking here about pretty small scale. And how many of those jobs will be new or local? Could it be that many of them will consist of specialist teams brought in from elsewhere? Even if unconventional gas provides all of the 72,000 jobs that the Prime Minister recently claimed, that's still a drop in the ocean compared to the number of people unemployed in the UK. And when it comes to UCG locally, you're talking about a much smaller drop in the Lucker estuary. Of course, there'll be the Prime Minister's recently announced community initiatives, incentives for unconventional gas development. Oh, but hang on. That only applies in England. So, I'd like somebody to tell me what's in it for the local community? What's in it for the people of Berryport and the other communities around the Lucker Estuary? On Thursday, the Daily Telegraph published details of a poll by the Institution of Mechanical Engineers and ICM, polling organisation, showing that nearly half of the public oppose fracking in their backyard. Of course, we have to be careful of nimbyism. But when you drill down into the details of this poll, you'll find that already 25% of people are totally opposed to unconventional gas development. Um, now, Dr. Tim Fox of the Institution of Mechanical Engineers responded by saying, these poll results suggest that simply offering money to local councils and communities is not enough to convince the public about the benefits of fracking for gas and that much more work needs to be done to engage with citizens on this potential activity. That echoes something that Mr. Clough said some time ago when he was quoted by Reuters as saying, we need to explain the absolute difference between fracking and the offshore coal gasification technology. Now it appears from this that Mr. Clough thinks opposition to what he's planning is at least partly based on confusion between UCG and fracking. Unfortunately, this seems to be a typical response from the great and the good when it turns out, as it often does, that the general public actually don't actually agree with what they think is in our interest. This rather patronising idea that we don't really understand, that we're confused, and that if they could only communicate their message more clearly, we would all see the error of our ways. Is that true? Are we confused? I think we're very clear about what's involved, and about whose interest this is in, and very clear about our response to it. From evidence I've seen, from the discussions I've had with people right across Wales and beyond, it's clear to me that we not only do we not want any unconventional gas development within 10 miles of our homes, here in Wales, we don't want it within 10 miles of our country. And we certainly don't want it in the Lucker Estuary, one of the most environmentally sensitive and protected areas of our nation.